بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد وشنو يشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى that we have been informed of the details of all the minor and major signs of قيامة no ummah has been afforded this opportunity صحابة said once نبي عليه الصلاة والسلام spent an entire day فحدثنا بما هو كائن إلى أن تقوم الساعة Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam informed us of everything to occur till qiyamah. So this is a great opportunity in the sense that we have been warned. But from this warning a person has to take lesson and make adequate preparation. Like a person has the questions of the Qabr and he has the answers of the Qabr. So we know everything but the question is when I'm in the Qabr it's three simple questions with three simple answers. But a person who's not prepared for it even he has to take a projector in the Qabr have the answers written on his coffin. It's not going to help. Mawlana Yusuf Rahmatullah used to say Sawal qabar me baqadr ilm nahi hoga lekin baqadr yaqeen The questioning in the qabar will be not will not be based on the amount of knowledge and books that we knew and learned but it will be based according to the yaqeen Mar Rabbuk Who is your Allah at any given time when you needed Allah, did your heart go to Allah first? When you had a necessity, did it go to the creation or to the Creator? Where was your allegiance? Was your allegiance to Allah, the Awamir, or to Makhluk, their Awamir in commands? Ma Dinuk, what lifestyle did you adopt? So the questions are very simple. But for the answers and effort is required. A sponge, if it's dipped in water and you squeeze it, water will come out. If it's dipped in milk, milk will come out. Likewise, وَحُسِّلَ مَا فِي sudur. The questioning is the squeezing. So a person can ask themselves, if I'm not ready to die, which is an objective of my life, then a greater fitna, a fitna of Dajjal, where ma bayna khalki Adam ila qiyami sa'a, fitna ashad min dajjal There won't be a greater fitna, a trial, a tribulation that will hit any ummah. Ma min nabiin illa anthara qawmahu, and every nabi approximately 124,000 Anbiya والسلام, that set foot on this earth warn the Ummah about Dajjal. Can we understand the gravity? Allah could have left it for Janabi Rasulullah because the coming of Dajjal was for this Ummah. Let us get this clear. The coming of Dajjal was destined for this Ummah, not other Ummah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned every other Ummah, even though His coming was not going to happen. But it was a warning, a lesson, a awakening for those Ummah. They were fortunate that they were not to see Dajjal. It is possible in our lifetime, Allahu A'lam bis sawab or not, we may see this fitna that every Nabi in the past warned the Ummah. So the preparation needs to be made. Like if you are told that you are going to be fighting in a boxing match, not flyweight, not bantamweight, not featherweight, not lightweight, not welterweight, not middleweight. But you will be fighting the heavyweight champion of the world. And Dajjal is not only the heavyweight champion of the world, but combined, take all the Muhammad Ali's, Tyson's and Mayweather's of, of all the Zamanas, combine it. 
and saying you fight you fighting the heavyweight champion of the history of mankind now if a person wants to step into that boxing ring what preparation he needs to make before the match likewise we need to check ourselves how much preparation have we made for this great battle a person in a boxing match the worse he loses the match yo we lose our akhirah so the stakes are not small the stakes are high accordingly preparation needs to be made secondly the small signs people say it's just small signs the small signs are a build up of the major signs means for dajjal and his appearance before he comes when we prepare an occasion for somebody great coming how much work is there even the podium the scene so these are small things the flowers on the tables these are all small things but the combination of all these small things is a preparation for the big guest that is coming so all the small signs are part of the major signs in the sense of it is preparing it is the runway it is the tarmac for the coming of dajjal and if we are witnessing these signs then we need to be worried like many tributaries and small rivers link up to one big dam all the water is collecting at the big dam and now the flow of the water in the dams have risen in all of these stream it has risen the dam wall can handle it and there's a warning sign out now so even experts tell you when water level reaches a certain point this possibility of the dam wall breaking and bursting these signs are an indication of an impending breakout now somebody will decide i want to put sand bag somebody will say i'll build a wall around our my house whatever preparation you're going to make is not going to work the instructions are don't be in that area you need to be a born high in the sky this is one mountain so the experts are telling you only one mountain when the dam walls burst that's what you need to be at the kalam of allah the book of allah quran and the sunnah of your nabi if you are on that mountain high you are close to allah in the sky then the dam walls can break no matter what anybody does on the earth they're not going to be saved from that you have to follow the instructions of the engineers and the experts so this fitna is not something small but all these small fitnas trials and tribulations is a preparation for the coming of dajjal and if we say fitnas what's fitna trials tribulations test but to understand a fitna if there's a fire raging and the warning signs are out that there is wild fires so according to a person's preparation what they make in preparation for somebody will have a glass of water somebody body will have a fire extinguisher somebody will be like in kandla they'll have a fire pool some people will have fire proof houses fire proof clothing oxygen masks everything that is needed to protect them from the fire the fires are raging around us i need to ask myself this question will i be prepared for it or not 
a simple imtihan that came to the Hawariyin where they made dua Rabbana anzil alayna ma'ida min as sama Allah send the dastarkhan from the heavens this was the request of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that kunu ansar Allah kama qala Isa ibn Maryam lil Hawariyin man ansari ila Allah when Tashkil was made, these were the ones that stood the test of time and they were there for Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Sure, inni munazziluha alaykum. It's gonna happen. Famay yakfur ba'd. Whoever is not gonna fulfill the criteria, fa inni u'adhibuhu adhaban. لا أعذبه أحدا من العالمين. The consequences are not going to be light consequences. The consequences will be devastating. The consequences will be, and in some riwayat it is mentioned that they were converted and changed into monkeys and swines. A majority of the commentators say the Hawariyin were an exception because the criteria for the Dastar Khan was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed through Isa alayhi salam that it should not be ordered, one narration. Other narrations say that the affluent should not partake of it. Whatever the situation, whoever breached it. But according to the majority of the commentators, this special group also stood the test of time. I need to ask myself again, Am I part of that special group that will stand the test of this time as well? So although the fitna will engulf and wipe out, like they say there were once three lunatics working on a building site, they were digging a trench, the foreman comes, he's surprised, he sees one man digging furiously, while the two are standing there motionless, they've got their shovels in the air, and they say and they claim that we are holding the lampos. So the foreman shocked, says, you two are wasting my time. He sacked them both. And he's waiting for the third one to carry on digging, but he stops. So he asked him, I haven't fired you. Why have you stopped? He said, uh, actually, how do you expect me to work in the dark? How do you expect me to work in the dark? The fitna of Dajjal will be such will see the light, like at lampos, will think so it's light, but actually the darkness will envelop. And it comes us to today's riwayat, where Huzaifa radiallahu said, we were by Umar radiallahu anh, فَقَالَ أَيُّكُمْ سَمِيَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ يَذْكُرُ الْفِتَن Any of you have heard the Nabi Allah speak about fitan? So people said, نَحْنُ سَمِعَنَا we were there, we heard about it. So he said, no, I think so you people are speaking about fitnat al fi ahlihi wa jarihi. You are talking about those issues a person is with his wife, with his neighbors, just some discord, etc. They said, yeah, that's what we thought about. He said, no, those are such fitnas, salat, fasting, sadaqah, it will wipe out those small differences, you'll make each other maaf, you'll carry on with life. That's not a serious fitna. وَلَكِنْ أَيُّكُمْ سَمْيَ النَّبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَذْكُرُ الْفِتْنِ أَلَّتِي تَمُوجُ مَوْجَ الْبَحْرِ The fitnas that will come will be like the waves of the ocean. How the waves come, first meaning incessantly. It will come incessantly. One fitna after another. You don't have one guna under control and another one grabs you. You don't have that under control and another one grabs you. Perpetually, relentlessly, frequently the fitnas wipe you out. Secondly, the waves of the ocean when they, they climax can become tsunamis. The fitnas like tsunamis will come. As the Ruzay Farhan said, فَأَسْكَتَ الْقَوْمِ People hushed into silence, they became flabbergasted. فَقُلْتُ أَنَا So I said, oh, you know what? I heard Nabi Alayhi speak about what you're talking about. تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنِ 
على القلوب فتنس ولكم اوف ذا هاتس كالحسير لايك ذا ريدز اوف اي مات عودا عودا ون ستيك اوف انذر ستيك لايك هاو اي مات is woven and intertwined like that that will be part of the fitness to come there are many meanings which ulama have explained one possible meaning is and if we look at today's cell phones computer screens plasma screens there's a thing called pixels and pixels work on two dimensional grids So when we say it's 720 or 1080 they give you the horizontal and the vertical numbers udan udan like how you wave and you combine the sticks to make a reed mat based on the fabric and the fibers you can make a map or in a design on those mats like today and nowadays we see the reed mats have designs like that your screens in the olden day screens which is blur and outdated 300000 pixels 300000 combination of waves to make an image 4k means 4000 pixels on one horizontal grid Inshallah we will continue and uh, on this narration may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us on all this fitan istighfar and tawbah is the need of the time in al abd idha akhta khati'atan min my seven comments say guna nakatat fi qalbihi nuqtatun a black dot and spots come on his heart fa in huwa naza'a wa istaghfara he decides guna is not my avenue my way he abstains and he makes toba in istighfar suqilat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures his heart fa in aada zida fiha hatta taglif qalb and if he continues that guna like the waves we described it will engulf his heart fadhalika ran alladhi dhakara allah kalla bal ran ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun this darkness envelops and covers his heart to an extent that his heart even becomes hidayat proof quran hadith the talks of deen he runs away far away from it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah let us make a habit and routine to continuously recite this man am an'am allah alayhi ni'matan if ever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given anybody any bounties and he wants those bounties allah has given a person health allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a person wealth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him parents his children and he wants them to be in afiyat and protection fa arada baqaaha and he wants it to remain fal yukthir min qawl la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah he should recite excessively la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin